He always looks like he's 20 years old. This is what he looked like 15, 20 years ago. He hasn't changed, only he has grown. <laughs> <laughs> Joe actually has a funny story to tell you. Um, way back, I would say probably about 15 years or so, you know, I was getting a little trouble with the law. Nothing too serious, but, you know, I used to always a lot of traffic tickets, speeding tickets, you know, things of that nature. So one morning, you know, I used to open up the gym at that particular time at 4 o'clock in the morning. And one morning I was running extremely late for work. And Joe, I'll let you finish the story. Well, I saw this vehicle that was doing the speed of light. I guess he must have been late for work. So I, when I recognized the vehicle, I said, oh, geez, I know who it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare him a little bit to let him realize, you know, even though it's 4 in the morning, you know, he still has to obey the law. <laughs> he was on my turf. You're a film hog. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so I, I pulled him over. And I had a friend of mine at the time, uh, both vehicles with the lights on, and since it was dark out, we had the spotlights on him, so we, it was one big spotlight on Kevin. I asked Kevin to come out of the vehicle with his hands up. Okay, now meanwhile, as he's telling me, as I'm getting pulled over, and he's telling me to come out with my hands up, I'm like, my heart is pounding. Not only am I late for work, but I have a suspended license. <laughs> This is like a reoccurring thing. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I didn't see it. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but when I asked him to step out of the vehicle, I had him throw the keys up on the roof, step out of the vehicle with his left hand opening the door first. I had him go through the, the real, the, the proper procedure. And uh, he came out. I told him to turn around, talk, walk back towards the vehicle. And then I said, okay, raise your hands up in the air. Turn around, do a 360. <laughs> and I said, now start approaching the vehicle slowly. Do not move your hands. We don't want any accidents to happen here. Uh, the city was in a suspicious area, and he was acting suspicious. Okay, and now, I think I'm about to get catch a rot in the king. <laughs> <laughs> I see Kevin starting to sweat. And I can see that because the spotlights were right on him, so I can see the sweat coming down. <laughs> and his legs started buckling. I'm like, where my brother's from the hood to help you right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said, no, say, face me and give me a double bicep shot. <laughs> At yeah. first I saw a, a disbelief. What? What just happened? Because I, I said, I asked for a double bicep shot now. And then he, he, then he started realizing, oh, somebody's screwing with me. He gave me a double bicep. He had a black lat spread. He, he gave me a whole bunch of shots. I said, now you go. Tell Steve that, that uh, the reason why you were late because you were speeding, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> no, but or like I said, we're all big one, big family here. We always tease each other. But our motivation is to get better each day. Um, it's the best gym to be at, like I said before. Uh, a lot of champs come out of here. No matter what your sport is, this gym has all the equipment. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things, uh, you want to be a champ, you got to train at the right place with the right people. Right, champ? That's right, baby. All day, every day. Every day. Nothing but a peanut, like, like Ronnie says. <laughs> All right, let's get back to working out. All right, All right Kev. Hey, right, baby. Thank you. I got some corn. Rose. What's up guys? We're back at Beth Francis Powerhouse Gym. Today's Thursday, which is our arm workout day. Um, usually I start with biceps and then go to triceps. So let's do this. We're getting close now where from this Saturday it will be three weeks out for the New York Crow. Ready to do this? Ready to do this, baby. Ready to do this. Gotta wake up. I wish. Once I go through biceps, triceps would be easy. This right here is the greatest coach in the history of all coaches. This is my coach, Factory. Behind John Wooden. <laughs> 
my coach Factory. He is the best in the bodybuilding industry when it comes to training and nutrition. This guy has helped my physique leaps and bounds and just looking forward to a bright future with him. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> hey guys, this is uh, ISB Pro Factory Mubarak, um, contest prep specialist, nutritionist, and coach. Um, I've been working with Kevin since September, uh, middle of September, right after the Olympia. And uh, this year, what we proposed this year was for him to come in, not just harder, but more sharper with sharper details, deeper lines, um, as well as, you know, full. Kevin's a big dude, and, and you know, as big as he is, he could be fuller on stage because he had to suck down so much the last couple of weeks to get down to the show that it affects his fullness on stage. Um, also, you know, it's not just the fullness, but it's, it's how tired he is on stage and everything else. So this year, we, you know, we took a whole different approach to try to get him down, you know, within range, and then just, you know, last the last week to make sure we're closer to the weight. Um, the things we've been doing different is carb cycling, um, different supplementations as far as like, you know, Vitargo, creatine, um, glutamine, you know, whey protein isolates, uh, different type of vitamins, uh, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, not just is he gonna win the New York Pro and the 212 show, but we're going for Lee Haney's record of nine straight. The difference, do you do different okay. workouts? Um, Generally speaking, arms is a strong point for me, but still, you know, I feel like your arms can never be big enough. And in the past, I always started with triceps first, but when I was younger, I used to lift extremely heavy, and I have small joints, so I developed a lot of tendinitis in my joints. So now what I like to do is I like to start with biceps first, just to help warm up my, um, my tendons, and then go into triceps. Generally, what I like to start with is I like to start with the basic compound movements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a barbell curl first. Then from there, I'll probably go into um, a slight incline on a seated dumbbell curl. Then from there, um, I'll either do a preacher or a spider curl. Again, making sure we hit different angles to hit different heads of the bicep. And then from there, I'll probably finish up with the hammer curl. And then go into triceps from that point. As far as like doing a straight bar easy curl, I like to mix it up. But I started to, as I get closer to the to the show again, my ligaments and my joints aren't as strong, my tendons. So, so when I do the easy curl bar, it puts a lot of pressure on my wrist. So right now, I'm just gonna be doing um, the straight bar to start with. And again, don't get confused with oh you have to have so much weight to have, to have really big arms. That's, that's not true. Some of the biggest guys, you know, with their biggest arms don't even go necessarily that heavy. It's really about having, you know, good form. And then also, too, just um, making sure you have a good contraction. Now, with some of the exercises that I do, I will use a little bit of, I'll use, I will use a little bit of momentum. But I, I'll try to keep, even though I'm using momentum, I'll still try to keep my elbows back as much as possible, not let them go forward. Because when you have a tendency to go forward like this, not using, utilizing a lot of your front delt, so what I'll do is, instead of bringing my arms forward, I might use a little bit of my back, but still keeping my elbows back. So even though I'm using a little momentum to help get the weight up, I'm still utilizing my biceps as my elbows are back, as opposed to coming forward. One. Rep range for, t for today is going to vary, but it'll probably stay mostly in, a, in around the 10 to 12 range. Give or take, some sets might be a little less, some sets a little bit more. What I try to do at this point, as we're very close to the show, 
it's trying not to go, you know, too heavy, but heavy enough where I'm still stimulating the muscle. And I really want to focus on getting roughly 10 reps, that's the goal. So say for example, if I only get maybe like six or seven reps, I'll put that weight down, I'll rest up a couple of seconds and I'll go back to it to try to finish up for that extra two or three reps, whatever it might be. And the reason being, I, the reason why I do that is because I still want to try to keep as much muscle as possible. You know, so if I'm resting up a couple of seconds and going back to it, my body so, is still utilizing that heavy weight. Therefore, I'm still keeping my muscle mass. Right now, we're going to do um, for our second exercise seated dumbbell curls on a slight incline. The goal here is to do 10 reps. Um, weight's a little bit heavy for me, so I'll probably get around like six or so, six, seven. I'm gonna put the weight down, rest up a couple of seconds, and then try to finish up on my own. If I can't, then I'll have Henry assist me to finish up to, to make 10 reps. Six. Seven. So now I'm going to rest up for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. And then I'm going to grab the weight and finish up two more reps. <laughs> What? <laughs> Your head looks so small on your shoulders, man. Come on. You finish up. Rest up again in about 15 seconds and try to push out another four if possible.
two. Come on. Three. Four. Four kids. Five. Okay. Preacher Curls. Um, I happen to like this machine. It's a hammer strength Preacher Curl machine. Um, I would either do it here or either I would do it with a dumbbell. Again, I don't like using an easy curl bar at this point because it puts a lot of pressure on my wrist. What we try to do is we try to keep our tricep as much on the pad as possible. So when we come down, come up. Now, as I fatigue out, I have a tendency of stopping a little short. So Henry will, have, will help push me up. Now, believe it or not, this is as high as I can go right now, even without any weight, because I have pretty big biceps, and my biceps are full. So I can't really go past this point. Yeah. One. Two. Push it. One more. Come on, come on, baby. Good. Right now, the piece of our last bicep exercise, we're going to do hammer curls, which is going to hit the outer, bi outer bicep and forearms. Two sets, and they go into triceps. Biceps that would have gone to triceps and 
One of my staple movements with truck starting with triceps always is a close grip bench press. I find it adds like a lot of thickness to your tricep. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that over on a flat bench. Okay. First movement again, we're going into a close grip tricep press. Now when I do this particular exercise, when you see my hand grip, you might say, oh, well that's not really a close grip. But what you have to remember is the bar is long. I'm not using a short standard bar to do close grip presses with. So because the bar is long, I have to take a slightly wider grip. If I'm still going too close on a long bar, it's going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on your wrist. Therefore, if you want to go a little bit wider. Okay, so for me, I have very long arms. So a normal standard bench press would be like this for me. A close grip is going to be around here. Okay, so again, this is our last set. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of partials, you know, three, four, whatever we can get, then strip it down to two plates. Downs. Okay, I alternate between doing a straight bar and doing the rope every other week. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do three sets. But each set that I do, I'm going to do a set and I'm going to drop it two times. With each drop, I'm slowly going to increase the repetitions. So I can try to push as much blood into the muscle as possible. So I'm going to start heavy, do eight to ten reps. Drop the weight, try to get 15 or so reps, drop the weight again, try to get 20 more reps.
I got an Audi I paid a hundred bucks for in the ocean. But the Bugatti? It's gotta be a ten thousand dollar oil chain. Probably got like, you know, probably whole turkey. Reason why I like using a rope. It's the last one, fuller range of motion as opposed to doing the ball. It's all dusty and stuff. Oh, that poor car, man. The Prince of Dubai or something. Guys, when I'm probably why I traded so many layers of clothing, I'm actually really shy. Believe it or not, I've always been shy. Even in the summertime, it could be blazing hot. You'll still see me with a long sleeve shirt or either sometimes a sweatshirt. I rarely go to the beach, and if I do go to the beach, I still have on a t shirt. I won't walk around shirtless. It's just like me. Again, very down to earth, very, and I'm very, very shy. Believe it or not, even though I like to play around a lot.
again, you never see me training in the tank top. It's really rare. Especially don't like to show my body this close to a show. Only because, you know, your mind plays tricks on you and I'm gonna call it completed state so my body feels real flat. Earlier you guys we can see the full package come the day of the competition, because you'll see me big and full at that point. But again, I'm trying to partner sucking me into this. And you're doing it for all your fans out there. And I'm doing it for you fans. You fans! Don't make fun of the way I'm walking, right? <laughs> if you <laughs> can't you do legs, that. if you're walking like a duck, if you've done legs, you know you hit him hard. If you're not walking like a duck, you gotta go back. All right, the big bob in prison took care of him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a rally. Great show. <laughs> <laughs> you take your branch and your molasses ten times a day, you could look like this too, baby. Right. Right. This is my second third. This is my second third. over here, my little brother, a.k.a. Mr. Rosé, a.k.a. Little Romeo. On what side? A.k.a. Ladies Love. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't good in stuff. Fathers, hide your daughters. This guy's on the move. <laughs> Sit your mouth. What happened to the other sneakers? Bro, you, you don't like the Jordans today? The Jordans are nice. You normally wear those out to the clubs. See the toy You like this, right, baby? Suede. Got it's suede? It's got suede going old school, baby. Mm. What happens if you wear them in the rain? Do they shrink? If I wear them in the rain, then I, I would just wear my, my other leather, my leather joints, my leather joints. Which, which ones are your beat sneakers? The ones you got on. <laughs> <laughs> you put two of your feet in my clothes. Well, what size are you? 13. Yeah, I'm size 12, and I'm only 5 to 4. What does that tell you? Wow. Uh, it tells me that I match your own <laughs> the, deformities. That, that tells me either I'm, I, I'm already know I'm big, but either I'm super huge. It took you 16 either, years to get used to your feet. Or, or either you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm just saying. Would you like to see it again? Oh, I'm not going to show you. Huh? Listen, so if, I go, if I want to see a tic tac, I'll go to the school. This is a whole new video right now. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I spoke to your, your ex-girlfriend, she said it's like giving a tic-tac to a whale. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I have to think of it. <laughs> the memory banks are searching. Come on, kid. We bust on each other, but I love this guy. I would go to battle for this guy. I would die for this guy. This one, too. All right. <laughs> That concludes our session of arms. It's a wrap. That concludes arms. Next workout day is going to be tomorrow. What's your pose? Friday. Pose. Yeah, which is um, oh, which is um, tomorrow we're going to do like legs, quads specifically. You get it?